video we show you 10 best things to do in Budapest. With history on the West Bank and hedonism on the East, learn more about Budapest's different sides. Separated by the Danube River, Buda, and Pest form the two halves of Hungary's capital, linked by the famous chain bridge since 1849. Their separation runs deeper than the river though, these two regions have their own distinct personalities. Where Buda's hills offer sweeping panoramas across the city, Pest is entirely flat. While Buda's castle district purrs with imperial taste, Pest's buzzing bar scene is always lively. Here, we introduce the city's two faces, Buda and Pest. Enjoy! Number 10. Sejhani Chain Bridge. Budapest's magnificent suspension bridge, unveiled in 1849, connects the Buda, west, and Pest, eastern, sides of the city, arching over the river Danube. Designed by an English engineer and built by a Scot, the bridge represents national pride and economic advancement. It's historically important, architecturally impressive, and only takes 15 minutes to stroll across, so you can marvel at the views stretching for miles on both sides of the river and get some superb photographs. It also looks fantastic at night when it's all lit up. You'll find many young crowds sitting on the green iron railings and listening to music, sharing food and drinks, and having a laugh as the sun sets. Number 9. Buddha Castle and Castle Hill. Sitting at the top of Castle Hill is Buddha Castle. The castle was the palace of the Hungarian kings, and was built in 1265. The original castle was replaced in 1749 to 1769 by the Baroque palace you see today. The castle houses the Hungarian National Gallery, where you can see medieval, Renaissance, Gothic, and Baroque Hungarian art from as far back as the 15th century. It also houses the Hungarian National Museum, which has several exhibits showcasing Hungarian history and archaeology. Don't miss on the funicular, it is a simple way to explore the castle without climbing to the top on foot. It only takes 10 minutes, and at 4 euros and 50 cents for an adult, your laziness isn't going to cost too much. Number 8. Sejhani Thermal Bath. A trip to Budapest wouldn't be complete without a visit to one of its many relaxing thermal baths. There are seven thermal baths in the city, but the most popular and biggest thermal bath is the Sejhani Thermal Bath. It has 18 pools of different temperatures, both inside and outside the building. It also has 10 saunas and steam rooms, as well as luxury spa treatments and massages. Set in a grand Renaissance and Baroque-inspired building that is more than 100 years old, it's the perfect activity in Budapest for couples looking for relaxation. Visiting the thermal baths is definitely the most relaxing thing to do in Budapest. Number 7. St. Stephane's Basilica. It's hard to miss St. Stephane's Basilica, as it's 96 meters high, the same as the Parliament building. This Roman Catholic basilica is the third largest church in Hungary, and was named after Stephane, the first king of Hungary. Inside the church, you'll find several neoclassical paintings and statues, and an ornately decorated altar. It's still a working church, so do be respectful when visiting. One of the highlights of the church is the viewpoint from the dome, which can be accessed by elevators or climbing 364 stairs. At the top, you will see 360 degrees views of the city. The church was originally a theater, and you can still enjoy classical and organ concerts here in the evenings. Number 6. Heroes Square and Millennium Monument. There are three major squares in Budapest, but possibly one of the most important is Heroes Square. It is best known for the Millennium Monument, which features seven statues of the first Hungarian leaders who founded Hungary. There are also several other statues here that commemorate important figures in Hungary's past, such as the Stone of Heroes Memorial, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and the Pope John Paul II Memorial. While you are there, don't forget to visit City Park and everything he can offer. 
Sightseeing highlights include the Museum of Fine Arts and the Palace of Art, the Municipal Zoological and Botanical Garden, the excellent Transport Museum of Budapest, Tivoli Pleasure Park, with its kids' rides and arcades, and the massive open-air Seicheni medicinal bath. Also worth seeing are the fairy tale Vaida Hunuad Castle, and the 100,000-seat People's Stadium. Number 5. Margaret's Island. Which brings us on to the next attraction in Budapest. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the city, but luckily you don't need to go too far to find a bit of green space to relax in. Margaret Island is a large island in the middle of the Danube, and is where you'll find an expansive green space, running tracks, swimming pools, thermal baths, and medieval ruins. The park is the perfect place for a picnic overlooking the Danube. This is undoubtedly the best free thing to do in Budapest, except for the cost of your picnic, of course. Number 4. Gellert Hill and Citadella. Looking for the best panoramic views of Budapest? Look no further than Gellert Hill. This 235-meter high hill, made up of dolomite rock, stands majestic on the Buddha side of the Danube River and is named after St. Gellert, Hungary's first missionary, who was thrown to his death from there by pagans. Atop the hill you will find the Citadella, a fortress built in 1851 by Julius Jacob von Hainau, a commander of the Austrian Empire. In addition to the fortress itself and the unparalleled views of the Hungarian capital, visitors can also marvel at an open-air display of Red Army weaponry, most of them from World War II. Don't forget to visit the Liberty Statue on Gellert Hill, the panoramic views from underneath the statue are unparalleled, and help to make the walk to the top of the hill well worth it. Number 3. The Central Market Hall. If you're looking for some Hungarian souvenirs to take back home, this is the best place to find them. The Central Market Hall, also known as the Great Market Hall, was built in 1897 and is the largest market hall in the city. The hall has three floors of stalls, selling everything from fresh produce to wines and tourist trinkets. From paprika spice packets to Hungarian porcelain, the market has everything you could want and more. Make sure to check out the cured meats and cheese section and pick up some fresh produce for a picnic. Number 2. Fisherman's Bastion and St. Matthias Church. The Fisherman's Bastion is a neo-Romanesque terrace that offers panoramic views of the city. It has seven stone towers that were built to symbolize the seven chieftains who founded Hungary. It was originally built in the 1700s as part of a castle. It was said that the walls were protected by the Guild of Fishermen, who lived under them hence the name. What you see today is a renovated version of the original, built between 1895 and 1902. The St. Matthias Church is located next to the bastion, and was renovated by the same architect Frigis Schulek. The church is most well known for its vibrant and intricately decorated roof with porcelain tiles. It's a Roman Catholic church and was originally built in 11th century with a Romanesque style, but was renovated in the 14th century into a Gothic style. It was once the second largest church of medieval Buddha. Number 1. Parliament Building. A highlight of a walk around Budapest's lovely pedestrian-friendly cobbled streets is the area around the country's architecturally pleasing parliament building. Along with its neighbors, the Museum of Ethnography and the Ministry of Agriculture, it's perhaps one of the city's most attractive quarters architecturally. The world's third largest parliament building, this neo-Gothic building was inaugurated in 1886 to mark the country's 1000th anniversary. This impressive structure boasts 691 rooms, as well as an impressive 19 kilometers of corridors and stairs. Guided tours last approximately 45 minutes and are available whenever the government is not sitting and include many of the building's highlights, such as the main entrance hall, various lobbies, and the Hungarian crown jewels. Most tickets sell out a week in advance, so make your reservations as early as possible. When you are there don't forget to take a walk on Danube Promenade and to visit Shoes on the Danube Bank to honor the Jews who were killed during World War II.